Lewis Park at first base, number eight, Brady Good Walsh. evening and, and welcome to St. Louis Bowden's Park Orioles shortstop. baseball here Brady on Park and TV. And we are excited to bring you a matchup Andrew tonight between Bayla. two Metro and West foes, crosstown rivals, the St. Louis Park Seven Orioles five, facing five, off against the Benilde St. Margaret Red Knights here from Derek Keller Field in the heart of SLP. My name is Nick Nelson. I'll be bringing you the play-by-play -play call on tonight's game. Joined by my friend, color commentator, and fellow SLP alum, Chris Tatarek. Chris, how you doing tonight? Doing well, Nick, yourself? Doing very well. Hoping we can uh, keep the weather adequate for to get this game in. A slight drizzle falling here. Uh, as the players warm up on the field, uh, we'll just hope that it stays light and, and does not interfere with the action. Well, if the weather holds, we should have a great night because we have a great matchup and really the first nice day of spring thus far. Yeah, I know there's been a lot of frustration with uh, the coaches and players uh, with some of this weather. Here as you can see on the screen, the starting lineup for the BSM Red Knights. Leading off, the pitcher, Caleb Koski, followed by Connor Armand, the third baseman, Ben James, shortstop, batting third. Easton Bray Fogle, the center fielder, hitting cleanup. Followed by Dan Porish, the first baseman. Ben Thompson, the second baseman. Tomas Lee in right field. Sullivan Lawrence, the catcher, hitting eighth. And then bringing up the backside of the order, it's Brady Yakish, the left fielder. Really a solid lineup, top to bottom. Excited to see if some good hitting, good pitching. Yeah, two teams here with one loss on the season. The Orioles, four and one. BSM, five and one, so. Someone's going to get their second loss here, here tonight, assuming the weather holds up. On the mound here for St. Louis Park, it's Chris Hokinson, their ace, number 15. For Benilt, St. Margaret's pitcher and designated hitter, number 27, Caleb Koski. Here around the field for the St. Louis Park Orioles, you've got Stanley Riginti in left field, Stefano Giovanelli in center. Graham Sullivan out there in right. Brady Walsh, Henry Odens, Ben Farley, and Andrew Vela around the infield. Zach Kelfman behind the plate, and as I mentioned, Chris Hokinson on the mound, and he's set here for his first pitch. Outside, fastball for a ball on the first pitch from Hokinson as we are underway from Keller Field. 59 degree temperature at the first pitch. Hokinson is in the dirt with his second pitch, and it's a 2-0 count to Caleb Koski, starting pitcher for the Red Knights and the leadoff man. Hokinson winds up and delivers. And a hard hit ball straight away center. He's going back to the wall, and it's fielded in center field by Giovanelli, but a leadoff double to straight away center by Caleb Koski, and he does a little dance out on second base toward the dugout. As he should. Just an absolute stellar at bat. Couple good takes. Sees one down the middle, makes Hokinson throw a strike. Drives it straight over the center fielder's head. Perfect. Absolutely, a very well struck ball there. And now is gonna have to deal with a man in scoring position with no outs. As here, Connor Armand steps up to the plate. Pitch from the left-hander is in there for a swinging strike. Hokinson having a great year. Coming into this game with a 1.80 ERA, 22 strikeouts, and six walks in 11 and two-third innings on the season. Quickly gets ahead here, 0-2. Armand's gonna have to battle here. Hokinson may go to the nasty here on the 0-2 count. Steps off and looks Koski back to second. Crowd doesn't like it. Hokinson delivers. He's outside for ball. You can certainly feel it in the air, Nick. This is not just any other game. Both teams want to win. Both teams are bringing it. Already a leadoff double. It's building. One, two count, here comes the pitch. It's in there for a called third strike. And Hokinson has his first strikeout of the day. Batting third, 
Shortstop, number one. Getting behind on Hokanson is always a tough draw. Just burns it down the inside corner. What are you going to do other than walk back to the dugout? A start last week where he struck out 16 men. He's been on his game. Here comes Ben James, the captain of the Knights, the Red Knights. We're going to see if he can bring Koski home. James Koski's goes. off with the pitch. Here comes a throw down to third base, and he is in there safely. Good, good jump. jump there by Koski. Good jump, good slide. Solid throw down there by Helfman. Just didn't have a chance, really. Oh, one one count here. Pitch. Up high for a ball. If you're Helfman, choke up, put something in the outfield, something to bring home Koski, get that early run. It's going to be a big one with these two pitchers on the mound. Both, both pitchers very good. Breaking ball in there for a strike, and he did not like the call. Tough call. A lot of movement, got him, got him at the knees. Might have, might have been unhittable, but you know, it's a good pitch. And oh wow, already some barking coming from the BSM dugout, and the umpire and he's gone. Has already thrown out a coach. Wow, that is, that is fast. A little discussion taking place between the Red Knights dugout and the umpire here. We're going to have to get this under control before it spirals. Well, you can tell it's a high-intensity game. A big rivalry here between the Crosstown rivals. Uh, a lot of tension. And they're still, still waiting to get going here. Hopefully this doesn't affect the players too much. You don't love it. You know, these guys are trying to get into a groove. It's a little chilly out. They want to play. Uh, it's really early to be getting into these squawking matches with, uh, with the umpires for this BSM bench. There's the pitch, and it's strike three over the inside corner. James will jog back to the dugout. Now it comes down to Easton Brayfogle with two outs to try to get that runner in. And that's what Hopkinson does. He, he K's him, K's him up and down. Here we here was an early jam, and right now he's one batter away from getting out of it. Two down here in the top of the first. St. Louis Park versus Benilde St. Margaret, runner on third. Pitch is in there for a strike. And it's 0-1 count to Brayfogel. Brayfogel, one of the better junior players in the state. Committed to Arizona for college. He fouls one off. Out of play. Please return foul balls to the game. Thank you. That was a nice souvenir for that somebody has to return. You know, back when I played, the fans were offered a free popcorn for bringing a baseball back. Now it's just uh, out of the kindness of their hearts, I suppose. Well, that was, what, 25 years ago? <laughs> I don't know if it was quite that long ago, but uh, certainly was another, another era. And the pitch from Hokanson is in the dirt. Great block there by Helfman, keeping Koski at third. Hokinson spikes one on the 0-2 count. 1-2 count here to Brayfo, will run around third, two outs. Hokinson looking to strand that leadoff double. Ooh, pretty good pitch there, a little high. A little high, good take. That's what you wanna do, you wanna force some, force some strikes. Maybe work them full here. 2-2 two, two count here on the lefty versus lefty matchup. And the pitch. And he went around on that one. The throw down to first base is on time. And Hokinson strikes out the side. Strands the leadoff man. And we've got a 0-0 ball game here as we head towards the home half of the first inning. So maybe not the ideal baseball weather, Chris, but certainly compared to a lot of what we've had here, uh, a big improvement. I'm loving it. I'm loving being outside. The fans are filling the stands. And we're covered here, too, so no, no matter what happens, we are okay, my friend. 
You can see the starting lineup for the St. Louis Park Orioles here on the screen. Stanley Reginti leading off the left fielder. Graham Sullivan batting second, followed by the pitcher who we just saw rattle off three strikeouts, Christopher Hokanson. Ben Farley, the shortstop, batting cleanup, followed by Zach Helfman, the catcher. Andrew Vela, third baseman, hitting sixth. Henry Odens, the second baseman in the seventh spot, followed by Hank Bendix in the DH, and Brady Walsh at first base. Uh, a little bit of a note on this game, not something you see every day, a designated fielder, uh, Stefano Giovanelli, is playing center field but not batting. Spoke with the SLP coaches before the game. Uh, he's a multi-sport player, a very good basketball player, suffered an injury, and has not been swinging much this year. So they like to have his glove in the outfield, uh, but we will likely not see him at the plate. So uh, Hank Bendixson getting a chance to DH in his place. Here you see Caleb Koski on the mound for BSM. If that last name sounds familiar and you're a Minnesota Twins fan, that's no coincidence. He is the son of former Twins player Corey Koski, third baseman. Former Twins legend Corey Koski. <laughs> Some would say. No, I had a couple chances to meet Corey Koski. He's a great guy, very uh, passionate about coaching youth sports. I'm excited to see his son uh, on the mound here today after that great leadoff double. Unfortunately, did not convert to a run for Vanilla. Stanley Ginty stepping in and ready to get underway here in the bottom of the first. Here comes the pitch from Koski. It's a fastball in at the knees for a strike. Good first pitch. He's giving them that inside thus far, keeping it consistent. I like a big strike zone. We'll keep this game moving. Another good pitch, and Koski's up 0-2. Ginty, a prototypical leadoff man. Leads the team in walks with six. Tied for the lead in stolen bases with Hokanson with four. Rips a grounder to second base. It's fielded and flipped over to first. For the first out, no problem there for Ben Thompson. Bring up Graham Sullivan, the right fielder. Second, right fielder, number 25, Graham Sullivan. Sullivan, one of the few sophomores on this varsity team. One of the fastest players in the program, very good runner. We'll see if he's able to put those legs to use by putting it in play here against Goski. Swing and a miss on a good breaking ball. Bit over on that one. He'd love to put something in the gap, show off that speed, get around a third standing up. Which is in and fouled away. It's a breezy one out here at Keller Field in St. Louis Park. You can probably hear it in the microphones. Uh, the flag out beyond the outfield wall is flapping hard towards right field. It just fouled away. Sullivan stays alive here on a one-two count. Koski shakes off the pitch, likes this one, here he comes. Up and away, High heat. take, two-two count. Swing and a miss, it's in the dirt. Gets away from the catcher, throw down to first is in time. Two quick outs for tough, the Orioles. Tough at bat by Sullivan. He battled back. Third, took a couple Number balls, 15, but down in the dirt. That can be hard to lay off when you got two strikes against you. But well, these, these, these hitters are going to have their work cut out for them today. These are, uh, as I mentioned, two very talented pitchers on the mound. Every run is going to be at a premium. It was Chris Hokinson, the Orioles starting pitcher, star of the team. He's committed to head to the University of Minnesota, play for the Golden Gophers as a position player. You know, the, uh, the SLP to University of Minnesota pipeline is a rich one. It's produced such talent as myself. That's right. And which talent was that? <laughs> you can talk, talk to a microphone. Sure. 2-0 count here to Hokanson. 
And there goes 3-0. Ooh, a couple, couple close ones. Koski's upset. Koski not going to relent and keep anything over the plate. Hokinson, uh, a big-time hitter, batting 462, the home run and six RBIs on the season. And he's not looking to walk here. He probably likes that strike call so he can put one in over the center fielder's head just like Koski did and get on base. Got to match him. There's a chopper towards short. Going to be a tough play deep in the hole. Throw across is way off. Hawkinson will hold it first. It's going to probably be well, tough play. Could be, a, could be a hit or, a, or an error. Could really go either way. I think they'll give him a hit for that. Very tough play. Hawkinson was down the line. Three, he was, he was going to make it regardless. A little bit high in the throw. Might have rushed it, but wasn't going to get him. So with one on and two outs, Ben Farley, the shortstop, will come to the plate here. Koski looking to get out of the inning. First pitch is on the corner for a strike. It's 0-1. Koski, I mentioned, the son of former major leaguer Corey Koski. He's committed to go play ball at the University of Indiana in college. It's chopped away, foul. One of the bigger programs in the uh, Big Ten. Easy to foresee him uh, battling Hokinson uh, for the next few years. No doubt. Quickly in an 0-2 hole here is Farley. Now Koski's going to look to see if he can tempt him into swinging at strike three. Oh, and he's right over the plate. Strike three, the steal doesn't matter. That's the third out. And both pitchers give up a base runner, but work around it in the first inning, and we are scoreless after one at Keller Field in St. Louis Park. It's BSM Red Knights versus the St. Louis Park Orioles. Ooh. It the Orioles is in the bottom of gusting. the first. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one runner left on base. Fans, here are some upcoming St. Louis Park athletic events. The girls' softball team's in action tonight hosting the Benilde St. Margaret's Red Knights at 6.30 at Aquila Park. They will be in action on Monday against the Bloomington Jefferson Jaguars at 6 o'clock at Dred Scott Field. The boys' tennis team returns to action Monday, 4 o'clock at Hopkins. Tuesday, they will host the Benilde St. Margaret's Red Knights at 4.15. The boys' and girls' track and field teams will be participating in the true team meet on May 10th at 3.30. Pretty decent sized crowd here out to watch the game on an iffy weather night. Starting to feel a few more raindrops, but hoping those will stay at bay. Absolutely. And if you're Benilde coming to bat here in the second inning, you're looking to work the count, maybe make hoping to throw a few more pitches, foul some off, and ultimately get on base, but it's going to be uh, it's going to be the long con for some of these batters trying to see some pitches and get a feel for it and ultimately string together some hits. But uh, so far, a lot of a lot of great pitching as expected. Tough going against a first team All Metro player as Hokinson was in 2021. A major threat from both sides. I will say with the wind, Nick, it is blowing, and it is blowing out to right field. Potentially, if you put something in that direction, that ball will go beyond the train tracks. It could carry quite a bit. Right over to the Nelson Hockey Arena and Warming House, deep beyond right field there. number 28, Dan Porrish. Keller Field at Nelson Park here in St. Louis Park. No, no relation to my particular family line. Starting out the top of the second here, as Hokinson comes in high, and it's a 1-0 count for Dan Porsche, the first baseman. Another pitch here from Hokinson, breaking ball, drops in for a strike, and it's a 1-1 count. pitch at the knees for a strike and now it's one and two. Benilde St. Margaret's beat New Prague on Wednesday five to two. They're coming off a of victory as are the Orioles who won 11 and six against Orono. 
Just got a piece of that one. Both Staying of these there. teams coming off wins and good seasons previously. Looking to build on that and really contend all year. That's why this game is so important. I'm happy to just be out here playing. I mentioned a lot of a lot of cancellations, a lot of rescheduling happening this season with the the weird weather. We were originally hoping to call the game here at Keller Field a week ago on Friday. Yes, we were. The Kennedy Eagles of, of Bloomington, but that one was canceled due to rain. Two and two, the count to Porish. Here comes Hokinson. He fires a fastball, and that's fouled back. Way to catch up if you're the hitter there. Burns one high at the letters and almost wrapped around on it. Ball could have gone a long way. I'd look for something off speed here if I'm Hokinson, just to kind of give a little more action, maybe get him to swing over here. He goes down and away with a great pitch. He does swing right over it for another strikeout. That's four on the game for Hokinson. He's gotten every out so far six, on the K. Second baseman, number five, Ben Thompson. Ben Thompson, the second baseman, stepping in here with one out in the top of the second. Scores the ball game at Keller Field. First pitch is in there. Nice hard fastball for a strike. Pop foul and out of play. And another quick 0-2 count as Hokinson commanding here ever since the leadoff double by Koski. Absolutely tough spot to be in here. You want to force some strikes, but you can't go down looking. What do you do? It's a good pitch, good take. Just outside the zone. One, two count. Big gust of wind coming through. There's a chopper to short. It's going to be a bit of a tough play. Cuts in front and throws across. Great play by the third baseman, Vela. Good hard throw. Accurate. Batting seventh, right fielder. No sweat. 15, Tomas Lee. Here comes Tomas Lee, the right fielder, with two outs. Looking to get something going here for BSM. Pitch from Hokinson is a curveball high. And the count moves to 1 0 here. Hokinson likes that pitch to start off. Once he gets ahead of you, he starts burning those strikes. There's a nice hard fastball he can't catch up with. And the count goes to 1 and 1. Another strike. And if you're Hokinson here, you got to think about just going back to the gas. He's having a hard time catching up with that fastball. One and two, the count to Tomas Lee here with two outs in the top of the second. It's down and away for a ball. Another high breaking ball. Moves the count to two and two. BSM team coached. Worked it full here. This is huge. This is huge. You want to give yourself a chance as the hitter. Maybe take ball four, maybe get the green light. There's a fly ball into foul territory. Vela tracking, moving hard. Wow. That was a tricky one. That's That might be one where you see the wind coming into play. It uh, looked like it was very tough to track. Overcast skies. Mike Hokinson didn't really attempt. Yeah, I think the pitcher usually likes to let the third baseman or catcher make a charge at that. There's the pitch. Another foul ball. This one into the fence behind home plate, unplayable. And to his credit, Lee, after falling behind in this at bat, is battling, and now he's got it to a full count. Make the pitcher work. This will pay dividends later in the game for your fellow batters and also for himself. Another one. There's a fly ball. 
Shortstop gathering under it. And he makes the catch for the third out. A one, two, three inning for Hokinson and the Four Orioles. The the and we are scoreless no after an inning and a half here at Keller Field. As you can see here, a, a really nice view here behind the ballpark at Keller Field. I, I like this field a lot, the location of it. Got the train tracks and the uh, bike path just beyond that, that bridge that you can see in the background behind the Orioles dugout. You can also get up to date St. Louis Park athletic schedules by visiting the Metro West Conference website at www.metrowestconference.org. Once again, you can get up to date St. Louis Park athletic schedules by visiting the Metro West Conference website at www.metrowestconference.org. Welcome back to Orioles Baseball here on Park TV. I'm Nick Nelson, joined by Chris Tatarek here in the booth, bringing you this game between the Orioles and the Benilde St. Margaret Red Knights. Catcher, number 16, Zach Helfman. And if you're the home team here, Nick, you really, you really saw the script in the top half of the second. You want to make the pitcher work, force him to throw strikes, try to foul some off, put some balls in play. Just hope for the best. Zach Helfman, the catcher, number five hitter leading off here for the Orioles. And the first pitch is outside from Koski. Scoreless game here in the bottom of the second. Between two one-loss opponents. He's down and in. And a 2-0 count here for Helfman. Here's the pitch, another one down low, and all of a sudden a 3-0 count here to lead off the bottom of the second for Zach Helfman. If I'm the first base coach here, I'm, I'm signaling take all the way. And you're good with that. Strike right in there. Helfman batting 105 on the season, still looking for his first extra base hit. Pitch is in the dirt, ball four, and we've got a base runner. He charges down to first, but the catcher quickly goes and retrieves the baseball at the backstop. Lead off runner is on, he'll have a pinch runner. Number 23, Andrew Vela. Give Koski something to think about over there on first. It's like that's number 11, Jacob Favor, in to run at first base for the catcher. Man on first and nobody out. And here we have Andrew Vela, the third baseman, who made a nice defensive play in the top half of the inning. First pitch is a curveball, and it's a good one. He half swings, but he goes. All in one the count. A lot of lefty hitters out here, I've noticed. Two lefty pitchers on the mound as well. That's right. Swing and a miss, and it's a quick 0-2 count. That's just a, a pitch that seemed to lose 10 miles an hour per second as it just came in, just stopped in the catcher's mid. Nothing you could do. It defies the laws of physics. Third pitch, good take, just a little bit high, but a good pitch there by Koski. One and two, the count with nobody out here in the bottom of the second of a scoreless game. Favor has his lead at first base. Another good pitch, but just misses. Fans like it. Look for him to come, come with that heater on the outside again. That's a good pitch. 
2-2, the count to Vela, the third baseman. The runner on first. Chopper to second. That looks like it might just get through the hole, and it does. Favor's going to hold it second. And we've got some action for the Orioles here in the bottom half of the second. Good piece of hitting there. Put it to the gap, put it to the hole. Easy base hit, and the Orioles are on the move. Number one, Henry Oden. This program's had a lot of success under head coach Brian Kelly. Made the section finals three times in six seasons under Coach Kelly, or BK, as he's known. Koski steps off to look the runner back, and he's going to try to work himself out of a little jam here. Henry Oden's the second baseman. Another left-handed hitter. Going to see what he can do. Tries to lay down a bunt, but can't quite get, uh, get the bat on it. Like the idea there, tough on a high pitch. Dust yourself off, he could go back to it, or maybe just uh, come out swinging. Scouting report on this Orioles offense. Not a ton of depth, but a team that's going to play aggressively, run the bases hard, bunt, as we're seeing. Another attempt, and this one goes foul, so now Owens finds himself in an 0-2 count. That's just smart pitching. You know he wants to bunt. You know he wants to move the runners. Throw some high heat. You can't handle that as a bunter. That's a tough one to lay down on. The wind and the drizzle remaining steady, but the rain thankfully hasn't picked up too much. Great baseball weather. 0-2 count. Koski checks the runners, goes home. Oh, a very good pitch. Just missed outside. Catcher had a little chat with the umpire there. Just wanted to relay the information to his pitcher. See where he missed. One and two, the count to Odins. Umbrellas flying around in the stands. <laughs> That'll happen. And now Koski's back at it on a one-two count. Just down and away, and it dribbles away from the catcher. Both runners are going to move up easily, and that's, that's not what the Red Knights wanted. So that effectively takes care of the, uh, the attempted sacrifice bunt with no sacrifice. And now we're just going to see if he can drive one or two in. He is the master of his own destiny right here. Just put one in play. Don't try to do too much. Catcher Sullivan, Lawyer, or, uh, Sullivan Lawrence out for a chat with Caleb Koski. Yeah, they seem to be a little off on that one, but uh, you know, he's capable of getting out of this, just needs to put one in, uh, put one in the strike zone and uh, make the better work. 2-2, two -two the count here at Odin's with nobody out. Two in scoring position. Good pitch and good cut fouls it off. There's another bag of popcorn for you, Nick. If only. Thank you. Much to the chagrin of Howard. <laughs> A long look in here by Koski. Big pitch here. There's a delivery and pops that one away. The Orioles dugout is going bananas. They are loving this at bat. <laughs> Working his way back from a 0-2, still alive, still with the chance to make a huge splash. You love to see the camaraderie. Owens known, known more for his defense at second base. The SLP coaching staff very excited about the defensive duo up the middle between him in second and Ben Farley at shortstop. But certainly a guy who can who can deliver a hit. And he pokes one, and that's going to get past the first baseman into right field. One run will score. Yep. Vela will hold at third. Nice piece of hitting and a great at bat there by Henry Odens. And the party continues in the Orioles' dugout. They're absolutely loving it, cheering on their guy. He went up to sacrifice, and here he is on base with an RBI. You'll love to see it. Orioles leading 1-0 in the bottom of the second. 
for the RBI single by Henry Odens. I'll bring up Hank Bendixson, a designated hitter. Big hitter here if you're Koski. You just kind of want to settle back down. Don't worry about the runner on third. Not going to matter in the long run if he scores or not. Just worry about maybe an out, maybe a double play. Still nobody out here in the bottom of the second. Pitch to Bendixson, and it's another one straight to first base. And that one, just about the same thing. A grounder that just slips past. Hard throw to third, and a great slide, and he's in there. Bendixson will move up to second on the throw, and the Orioles are in business. 2-0. Just like that, it's a hip parade, Nick. Just as you predicted. <laughs> this is a great effort by the St. Louis Park offense against a good pitcher. And BSM Skipper is going to go out to the mound for a little chat. Hit him hard on the ground. The grass is wet. Tough to make plays out there. I think, Nick, we're seeing early on that fielding is going to matter. You saw the Orioles in the top half of this inning make a couple of really nice defensive plays to keep the clean score sheet. And now you've got Benilde in a little bit of a bind, forced to play D. It's a great throw there by the right fielder, Tomas Lee. It was, it was on the money. Just sort of made contact with the sliding runner, so the third baseman was unable to get his glove on it. But a good hard slide by Odens. Number nine hitter, Brady Walsh, the first baseman. First baseman, number eight. Brady Walsh. Still no outs for the Orioles as they're looking to kind of break this one open here in the bottom of the second, already up 2-0. Two, two men in scoring position. Skoski tries to rig a lot of this jam. He's Pitch certainly is lost. Lawrence hustles over to pick it up and the runners hold. BSM looks like they're going to play a little bit in on this, Nick. They're trying to hold. Uh, they're trying to hold this lead, and they've got the guy on the mound to help them do it. Could be risky. Could pay off. Well, when you're going up against a Chris Hokinson, you can't. You can't let that margin get too big. Or you're going to have a real tough night. Pitch from Koski. Up high for a ball. 2-0 count. Pitch, fouled away, out of play, pass first base. He wanted that one. He took a big cut at it, went down, bent the knees. One of the rare righty-lefty matchups here. He tried to break it wide open. Bent that knee like he was at King's Landing. There's a pitch from Koski up high. Scoreboard says 2-1. I've got 3-1, I might be mistaken. 3-1, 3-1. So you don't want to let the number nine hitter get away from you here, even though you got first base open. Ooh, good pitch right there. Fouled backwards, and that'll move the count to two strikes. Went by the ump like a speeding bullet. Full count. Count is full. Here comes the payoff from Koski. Another one fouled wide at first base, and that one too. It's going to get out of play. Just great at bats from these Orioles hitters in this inning. They're really, really hanging in there. Timeout is called. Full count, nobody out. Two in scoring position here in the bottom of the second at Keller Field. Orioles leading two to nothing. There's a rip to second base. No play at home, so they'll go to first and another run will come in. Nice little sacrifice there by Walsh. Great at bat. Worked the full, couple foul balls. Rejente. 
Koski's really getting into some deep water here with the pitch count and now staring at a 0-3 hole. Ripped back up the middle on the first pitch. Wow. And that'll bring home another run. And it's 4-0 Orioles all of a sudden. Stanley Reganti just jumped on that pitch and laced it right back up the middle. Still nobody out. Right fielder, Graham Sullivan. Caleb Koski and the Red Knights just having a heck of a time here trying to get out of the bottom of the second inning. Comes Graham Sullivan, throws oh, over to wow, first. Got him. And a nice pickoff move, and boy. Boy, did they need that. McGinty is picked off at first base. It's a tough mistake, my McGinty there. I don't know. I don't know if he was going, if the Orioles are trying to add insult to injury, but. Well, you mm -hmm. want to get what you can in this situation. But of course, you know, stealing second on the lefty is never going to be easy. Great pickoff move. I didn't, that was like the blink of an eye, Nick. I was looking down at my shoelace. Next thing you know, the batter is walking back to the dugout. Shades of Andy Pettit. Two down. Uh, Two down. Yep. Sacrifice earlier. Yep, yep, yep. One and one count here to Sullivan. It's ground ball, and that's going to get past the shortstop to his right for another ground ball base hit for the Orioles. Pitcher Christopher Hopkinson. Five hits in this inning alone, plus a walk for the Orioles, who are just parading around the bases. Here comes Hokinson. Singled in his first at bat. First pitch misses from Koski and he sure thought that was in there. A little bit of a head shake at the call by the umpire. Nevertheless, it's 1-0 to Hokinson with two outs and a runner on first. Pitch from Hokinson's in the dirt. Great reactions to run and take off and get to second. That was just a nice play there by Sullivan. The catcher smothered it. Acted pretty quickly. Yeah, as soon as that ball hit the dirt, he took off. Two outs. Might as well get in score position for your big batter here, Hokinson. 2-0 count to Hokinson, and we'll see how, how much he goes at him with first base open. You got another good hitter in Ben Farley on deck. Another pitch in the dirt. Well blocked by Sullivan Lawrence, the catcher. 3 0 count. Something tells me Hulkinson's not going to get a gimme fastball right down the middle here, but we'll see. Checks runner. Here comes the pitch, and that's ball four. They wanted no part of Hokinson in that at bat. Two outs. Shortstop, Ben Farley. Four runs already in in this inning. Here comes the cleanup hitter, Ben Farley, the shortstop. Koski just tries to get his team back into the dugout. First pitch is in there. That's what Koski needs to do. Just keep throwing strikes, get out of this inning, and let your batters pick you up top half of the third. Farley struck out looking in his first at bat. Now a big spot with two men on and two outs. Pitch is high. Count is one and one. Lifts a fly ball into shallow left. Shortstop is back and he makes the play. And finally, at long last, the Benilde St. Margaret's Red Knights are out of this inning, but a huge inning for the St. Louis Park Orioles. They push four runs across against Caleb Koski. 
four runs, five hits, no errors, and two runners. Left we four nothing base. after two here from Keller Field. Fans, it's your source, your online source for St. Louis Park baseball. SLPBaseball.com. From Little League to Town Team, SLPBaseball.com has it all. Wanted to take a moment here to pay tribute. For Benel St. Margaret's in the top of the third, batting eight, catcher number two, Sullivan Lawrence. The passing of Dan McEachern, St. Louis Park baseball icon. Recently passed away, a longtime SLP coach and gym teacher. Coached both head coach Brian Kelly and assistant coach Dan Bissonette in high school. It's on the last Gopher baseball team to make the College World Series back in 1977. The team was led by Paul Molitor. Of course, a former Twins manager and Hall of Famer. Fly ball, Hawkinson giving chase. Nice catch in foul territory there by the catcher. And a quick out. Batting ninth, left fielder, number seven, Brady Yakesh. And a nice moment of silence before the game uh, in honor of Coach McEachern, deservedly, deservedly so. Those of us who had the privilege of being coached or were taught by Dan, certainly appreciated how nice he was and how warm and certainly uh, was synonymous with SLP Orioles baseball. He will be missed. Yeah, it's very sad. It's from Hawkinson's in there for a strike, and it's one and one to the number nine hitter, Yakish. Hawkinson's, Hawkinson's really starting to feel his groove right now, just, just burning them across and seeing the bats are just a little bit behind. This is what he does. Oh. oh. And the senior Yakish takes a Breaking ball off the back on a one-two count. Pitcher and designated hitter, Caleb Koski. I bring Koski as we get tacked to the top of the order. One out here in the top of the third. Orioles leading 4 nothing against the BSM Red Knights. Hokinson hits the outside corner with the fastball. Moves ahead in the count on one. Nice little breaking ball there, but just misses outside. Count goes to one and one. Hokinson with your fairly standard four pitch mix. Throws two fastballs, a four seamer and a two seamer, as well as a change up and a curveball. One down in the dirt. Good catch by the catcher there. Yeah, I think these balls are probably getting a little wet and a little drizzly out there. Creates a challenge for the pitchers. Two and one, the count to Koski. He fouls that one away. That'll even the count of two. And if you're the Red Knights here, you have a runner on with only one out. Chance to maybe scratch out a run kind of get some momentum back in your favor here. And certainly Koski wants to lead that charge. He'd like to help himself out a little bit after 
four runs came across against him. Bottom half of the second. Throw goes over from Hawkinson to first, but Yakich dives back. Two two the count for Caleb Koski with one out here in the top of the third. And the fastball gets away from the catcher, and Yakish is going to easily move up to second. I'll move the count full. Expect Hokinson to go back to the fastball here, and chance for Koski to really put one in play. Driving a run. This is a big pitch. Hokinson checks the runner, and here comes the payoff. 3-2. A curveball, and it's outside. What a take. Great at bat, great take. Third baseman, Connor Armand. So without a hit, the Red Knights have managed to mount a threat here. Yakish, the number nine hitter, hit by a pitch, followed by a walk on 3-2 count to Koski. Now there's two on, and they're both going to move up there as the catcher's unable to handle that fastball. That's one you'd like to see Helfman squeeze. Oh, the runners are going to head back. I think uh, call the foul. foul ball. Yep. Owen one is the count to Connor Armand, the third baseman. Paints the outside corner with the fastball. And moves the count to 0-2. One away here for the Red Knights with two on. Hokinson checks the runner. Hits mm. the out inside corner. Down goes Armand looking. Tough spot for Armand there, down 0-2. You want to be able to put something in play, but when pitch comes in at the knees. That was a good pitch, and that's second time in as many at-bats tonight that the number two hitter Armand has gone down looking. Just outside. And it's a 1-0 count to Ben James, the number three hitter. This is going to be a good matchup. James, as you can tell, even standing in the batter's box there, an imposing athlete. Hokinson delivers outside, and it's a 2-0 count to James. That one misses by a ton. It's going to move the count to 3-0. Easton Brayfogle, the cleanup man, is on deck. Look for James to take a pitch here, maybe get to three and one and go ahead with the green light. Pitch is down low and that'll fill the bases for the cleanup hitter. Second walk of the inning for Hokinson. For the Red Knights, you'd love to get some runs here, but this is, this is huge regardless. You're making Hokinson work. Starting to rain. Center fielder, Easton Rayfogle. They definitely needed an energy burst after that bottom of the second. Coach Kelly comes out with a tool to help Hokinson clean some mud out of his cleats. Gets promptly sent back to the dugout. Coach is smiling. Comes the pitch from Hokinson. Just misses. That was a pretty good pitch. Hits the outside corner, and that'll put the count at 1-1. One one. Base is juiced, two outs. Orioles up 4 nothing, and a big at bat here for the cleanup hitter, Brayfogle. Curveball is over his head. He ducks. 
And Hokinson's really letting his control get away from him here in this uh, third inning. He was in control those first couple innings, but two walks and a hit by pitch have led to this BSM threat. This is again, that's going to push the count to three and one. Nowhere to put him. The curve is the same pitch he hit Yakich with. Seems like it's coming inside to these lefties. You might just have to go down to go back to burning, burning low and inside with these fastballs. It'd be tough to get a grip on that breaking ball in these wet conditions. Swing and a miss on 3 1, a big pitch by Hokinson. Big pitch, big swing. You like, you like him going after that there. That's some spicy hot action. Runners going with the count full, and it's fouled away. Ooh. Did not miss that by much. Three two count, bases loaded, two outs in a 4 0 game. And the rain's starting to fall here at Kellen Field. Ball four. The third walk of the inning for Chris Hokinson leads to the first BSM run. Poor steps in here. Chance First to take the lead, player, Nick. Dan He's a big slugger, certainly a threat, swinging from the right side here against the lefty. Takes the first pitch outside, and it's 1 0. 4 to 1 the score. Vanille St. Margaret's still without a hit on the inning. There's a grounder up the middle. Nice play by Far. Oh! Throw to the plate is not in time. Clever base running. It sure looked like Farley could have just stepped on the bag there. Let's take another look at it. Yeah, tough play. Makes the decision to try and flip it. And just a tough little transition. Came out of the glove, hit off the tip of his finger. Would have been a nice play. Unfortunately, couldn't be handled. Cost him another run as... Three runs now across here. What a response by Benil St. Margaret. An error charged on that play to Farley. And they put three runs across now without a hit in the inning. Well, Nick, we alluded to it earlier. Defense. A lot of these games, a lot of balls hit on the ground. Tough pitching. You gotta, you gotta back them up. You do indeed. Four to three, the score now. As the rain really starting to come down. Fastballs popped up, straight in the air, ranging over to the first baseman, and that was going to stays drift in. on him. Stays in play, but he just couldn't manage to pull it in. That's tough with the wind. You're looking up into the rain, splashing in your eyes. And the first baseman, Walsh, just not able to quite gather it up against the fence there in foul territory. 0-2 count to Ben Thompson, the second baseman. Hokinson goes to the curveball, and it wasn't a bad one, but Thompson doesn't bite. 1-2 count. Thompson looking to complete the comeback here. Anything in play potentially. Ground ball right back up the middle. Hokinson feels it, flips to first. And he's finally out of the inning. But a fruitful one and a great answer by this Benilde St. Margaret's team. They give up four in the bottom of the second. They get three back in the top of the third. We got a good ball game here at Keller Field. 4-3 as we head into the bottom of the third. No hits, one error, and two runners left on base.
Welcome back to Derek Keller Field here in St. Louis Park. Now Benilde St. Saint Margaret Park Red Knights the visiting the St. Louis Park Orioles, Orioles for a Metro West, West Conference matchup. And we got a good one here on a drizzly Friday night. Orioles leading 4-3 here as we get underway in the bottom of the third. Coach Kelly took his players aside there before uh, they left the field, almost as if to say, okay, look, this is... This game's not over. We jumped out to a big lead, and now here we are. We still have a lead. However, a lot of game to play. It's not going to get any easier. And at this point, I expect to see a lot more runs. Zach Helfman, the catcher, is in there, and he's got a 2-0 count. As he leads off for the Orioles here in the bottom of the third. Pitch from Koski. It's fouled away. Now we'll carry out a play. Orioles with four runs on six hits. Red Knights have managed to score three times with just one. Nice curveball there. Elfman swings over it, and that'll bring the count to two and two as Koski battles back. As the rain comes down here, you know, it creates a difficult challenge for the pitchers to grip, especially those breaking balls, but you also worry about the field conditions. There's a rip to deep left field. He's going to drop in. Elfman charges into second base with a double, and that's a well-struck ball to get the Orioles started here in the bottom of the third. Great piece of hitting by Elfman there. Just kept his feet planted. Didn't, didn't try to do too much. Third baseman, Andrew. Got his hands Bayla. out in front and ripped it off the fence, I believe, on a rope. Beautiful piece of hitting and exactly what the Orioles wanted to respond. Seventh hit of the game. A ringing double. Comes Andrew Vela, the third baseman. Who takes strike one from Koski. Pitch from Koski, chopper back up the middle, fielded by the second baseman. He flips over to first. He gets the easy out, but that's going to move Helfman up to third base. Fly ball to the outfield here would get him in. It's going to be Henry Odens. Second baseman, Henry Odens. Odens, of course, had that great at bat in the last inning. Battled his way through. Managed to come through with an RBI single. Really got to give Odin's the confidence here to step in and get another one. Saw a lot of pitches, made a lot of contact, ultimately put one in play, put it through the right side. Finds himself in a no two count. Gonna have to battle here. Comes a pitch from Koski. Good take by Odens, who again is battling here. That was a tough pitch to lay off, a high fastball, that he manages to check his swing. Looked like he checked it. Quick appeal, but very close. It's a tough call from the second base ump there. You don't have the, the greatest line of sight, but I think he had the right call. That one hits the corner for strike three, and a big strike out there for Koski. Designated hitter, Hank Bendixson. Runner on third with two outs, and it's going to come down to the designated hitter, Bendixson. Trying not to strand the leadoff double by Helfman. It's a chopper to start, second. Scoops it up, throws to first. And they do indeed strand that leadoff double, a quick bottom of the third. The and the Orioles lead remains at one. It's 4-3 with three in the books. Here from Derek Keller Field. 
at the end of Friday night in this Friday night Bangalore St. Louis Park, the St. Louis Park Orioles 4, the Vanilla St. Margaret's Red Knights 3. Upcoming schedule for the St. Louis Park Orioles. Facing YZ next on the schedule, followed by a game at Bloomington Jefferson. Cheska, Waconia, Rockford, Robbins Dale Cooper. All on the upcoming slate. Top of the fourth, about to get underway here from Derek Keller Field. My name is Nick Nelson, bringing you the action play by play tonight, joined by color commentator Chris Tatarek. Watching on Park TV, there's a rip. Pulled into shallow right field. Second baseman Odins goes back and pulls it in for the first out, a nice quick one. Hokinson's gotta be happy with that. We've seen a little bit of it all thus far, Nick. Going into the top of the fourth, we've got hits, runs, steals. Walks, hit batters, thrown out coaches. <laughs> it's been an exciting game. Smorgasbord of baseball action. And misses outside, and it's a one on one count. Sullivan Lawrence, the catcher, number eight hitter for the Red Knights. As Hokinson looks to protect a one run lead. The fastball right over the plate. Count goes to one and two. I mentioned that the Orioles have gone to the section finals three times in six seasons under coach Brian Kelly. Lightly tapped ground to first, gonna be a bit of a tough play. Hokinson manages to pick it up and tag him himself. That ball really died in the wet grass there. Left fielder, Brady Yatesh. Good effort to try to beat it out. 2022 Orioles squad hoping that this will be the year they can break through and make a run at state returning seven of their nine starters on the field and that certainly looked like a pitch where the muddy mound is not giving Hokinson a great landing spot Got him. Nope. Looks like they're going to call that a foul ball. Hmm. Certainly seemed like it made contact. Might have hit the catcher's mitt. Yeah, sure. Two-0 -oh count. And he gets a strike over to put it at two and one. from Hokinson just misses. He would have liked that one. I'll put the count at three and one here. To the number nine hitter, Brady Yakish. Strike will fill the count. Yakish fell behind 0-2 in his first at bat. Possibly one and two. He got hit in the back with a pitch. Sparked the rally. He drives one over the shortstop's head into left center field. Very nice piece of hitting, and that thing just died in the wet outfield. 
Stayed back, it's not coming the whole way. Nice, easy swing, nice contact. Gets on base for second time in a row. Two down, and it's back to the top of the lineup with Caleb Koski. Drew a walk and came around to score in his last at bat, doubled to lead off the game back in the first. First pitch is up and away. Umpire's going to come in, take a look at the mound. These conditions are getting pretty sloppy. Looks like maybe they're searching for something out there. <laughs> Looks like it's the uh, the file they're looking there for there for clearing out the mud. And with that taken care of, we'll get back to action here. It's a 1-0 count to Caleb Koski with two outs. Throw down to first. A little late. Just trying to keep him honest over there with two outs. Two and oh, the count to Caleb Koski. As Hokinson looks to get out of the top of the fourth. And that uh, breaking ball was not especially close and that's gonna move it to three and one. A hanging curve, it's been hanging. It's tough to get a feel for it in these conditions. Fast balling. Flicks it away, and that's going to carry out a play Remind wide at first base. To please return foul balls to the game. Thank you. Some lucky fan will get no popcorn. Full count here to Koski. Man on first of two outs. This one's driven to right. Sprinting for it. And he makes the catch in fair territory. A very nice play on the wet grass. Tremendous catch to the end of the inning there. For the Red Knights, one runner stranded aboard. No St. Louis Park no leads no and one four to three after three and a half. Now batting for St. Louis Park in the bottom of the fourth, first baseman, Grady Walsh. We're back here at Derek Keller Field in St. Louis Park, ready to get underway here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Orioles leading four to three against the BSM Red Knights. There's a pitch from Koski and it's in there for strike one. Interesting note, uh, Koski's father, Corey, threw right-handed, bat left-handed, all in the major leagues, and his son has the opposite profile. Brady Walsh, the first baseman in there with an 0-2 count. Pitch misses high, moves the count to one and two. Walsh hit an RBI ground out in his last at bat and grounded out to the second baseman and pushed a run across. 
Here he drives one to center field. Center fielder moving back to the wall, and that one is off his glove. And Walsh pulls into second base with a double that very nearly got out of the yard, Chris. Yeah, had a chance. The, uh, the center fielder made a, made a good effort at it. Tracked it well, got back Left there, just Stanley not enough time to Rich set his feet and get the catch. Nice double, nice leadoff double again for the Orioles. A few big drives to that deep center field area in this game. Ball one to Stanley Reginti. His name has been being pronounced Reginti, I've noticed by the PA announcer. I asked Coach Bissonette before the game how to pronounce it, so if I'm pronouncing it wrong, I'm sorry, Stanley. You can blame it on Coach Bissy. reginti has got a good ring to it. We'll stick with that for now. He's got a 1-0 count with the runner on second. We're back at the top of the lineup to the leadoff man here. That one's chopped foul back in our direction. We'll put the count at 1-1. Pitch gets away. Walsh will move up to third, and the throw over the third baseman's head. Mm. Questionable decision to make the throw down to third there. Gives you some flashbacks to the Minnesota Twins game the other night and the way that one ended. Yeah, it's a tough play all the way from the backstop. Tries to cut him down, didn't, didn't have a chance. You like the effort, you like the aggression, but it cost him. Another run in that pushes it to 5-3. Orioles leading. And now Reginti in there with a 2-1 count. It's a good curveball to even it up at 2-2. Two and two. And 198 at bats last year, Chris. Reginti at bat struck out only 10 times. Very difficult guy to retire on the K. But there's a swing and a miss. And with that, a strikeout. Well, he can think for that one later. Right Reginti's right a good hitter. He crowds right the plate. You can't beat him outside. Ball. Looked like Koski tucked one underneath the bat on the inside. That might be the, the way to hit him there. Here comes Graham Sullivan. Who's ahead water now? I mentioned Sullivan, a sophomore, recently got his first ever varsity hit in his first plate appearance at Chaska a couple weeks ago. Congratulations to that young man. Many more to come. There's a great rip. Charging in from center is the center fielder, and he can't quite get it. Slides after it, but it hits off his glove. Bray Fogel made a good effort there, but... It's a good piece of hitting. Pitcher, Just off the edge of the glove. That's two now this inning that Bray Fogle has had clang off his glove in center field. Both very difficult plays. I think as we go here, Nick, and as the runner goes, going to get second easily. Fielding is really becoming the story of this game. The pitchers are hanging in there, tough conditions, but the batters are putting them in play, and it's not easy to feel. Runner on second now. One down. As Hokinson's at the plate. Got a single and a walk on the day. Rain now falling at a pretty steady rate here. Pitch is high. Catcher Lawrence bluffs a throw down to second and 
In the meantime, you're wondering if you uh, put your car windows up. <laughs> There's a grounder into the hole. And a nice play by Ben James to glove it with the backhand, but he really had no play. He probably made the best move he could there. Gave a nice Short bluff. Stop. He wanted his third baseman to cover the back. He almost could have had, had him on the turn here. Big turn. Runners on the corners with one out. Here comes the cleanup hitter, Ben Farley. As this field is getting muckier by the moment. Yeah, it's starting to puddle up. Farley, not necessarily your traditional leadoff hitter, entered today's game with a 353 average, but only a 412 slugging percentage. One double on the season. Had three extra base hits and 70 at bats last year, but he's a guy who can put the bat on the ball and make things happen, so he's a guy you like having in the middle of the lineup. He's been up at a few big spots tonight, another one here. Trying to keep the back and forth going, push another ribby across. And here's another first, and ooh, not quite in time. And Koski certainly thought he had him. I thought he had him. It was a good move. A little late on the reaction to dive back there. Get in there. Another throw down, and this one's not close. Trying to keep Hokinson close over there at first base, down two runs. With the cleanup man on at the plate and two men on. Pitch is high and there goes Hokinson and he's gonna get into second with no throw. But if you're, if you're the Knights here, still a chance to get out of the inning. It's, it's only one out, but you got a couple strikes on. Koski's been throwing hard. One, two count to Farley. Runners on second and third with one out. And Koski looking to try to wriggle out of another jam here. In the bottom of the fourth. Step off. Here's the pitch. Jammed him inside, and that one's fouled away. A lot of credit to the fans here tonight, hanging in there in some chilly, wet weather. Showing support for the boys. Both teams filling the stands. I think, I think everyone realizes the importance of this matchup. And thus far, the game has had the intensity that we've expected. Here comes the pitch. Swing and a miss. A big strikeout for Caleb Koski. Catcher Zach Helfman. My catcher Zach Helfman stepping in here with two on and two outs. SLP holding a 5-3 lead. Looking to see if they can add on to a little bit here. Pitch from Koski, down in the dirt. Nice stop by the catcher. That one's in there for a strike. Helfman, a big power hitter, led the team with four home runs last year through the spring and summer. Also a very good football player. 
Getting some D1 looks. Calls for time and steps out. One one count, two men in scoring position, with two outs. It's a ground ball to the left side. Third baseman scoops it up and fires across. Makes a nice play to get the out, and Koski able to strand two and keep the lead at two for St. Louis Park. After four here at Derek Keller Field, St. Louis Park five, Benilde St. Margaret's three. In the bottom of the fourth, one run. Three hits, one error, and two runners left on base. Dance, it's time for the first installment of the 2022 season of Today in Baseball History. On April 29, 1986, the Rocket Man was on fire as Roger Clemens entered the record book by striking out 20 batters in a single game, a major league record. The Red Sox were playing the Seattle Mariners that night at the Kingdom. In the bottom of the ninth inning, Red Sox up 3-1. Clemens strikes out Bill Bradley for the record-setting 20th strikeout. Upcoming schedule for Benilde St. Margaret's. Roberts Dale Cooper next on the docket. We'll play at Jefferson a couple days later. Kennedy. The Bloomington double dip, as we like to call that one. Pitching change for the St. Louis Park Orioles. Chris Hokinson's day is done. Three runs allowed in four innings. And it's Stefano Giovanelli, the junior. On to pitch here in the top of the fifth. Now pitching number five, Stefano Giovanelli. Now batting for Benilde St. Margaret's in the top of the fifth, third baseman Connor Armand. First pitch from Giovanelli is in the mud. Falls behind 1-0 against Connor Armand. Armand is struck out looking twice today. Fouls that one away. Other changes for St. Louis Park. Stanley Reginti removes from center to left field. Left field to center field. And moving to left field, 15, Christopher Hokinson. One and one the count here to Armand. Ball's low, it's 2-1. So with Giovanelli moving from center field to the pitcher's mound, Stanley Reginti goes to center from left, and the starting pitcher, Hokinson, moves into left field, and there's a nice play by the shortstop, Ben Farley, to retire the first hitter. Shortstop, Ben. James. Solid night by uh, Hokinson there, Nick. He maybe didn't have his usual control, but you know we'll give him a pass given the weather as the train goes by here in the background. But still, you, you saw what makes him such a high prospect. Yeah, he was not hit hard. 
We saw the velocity. We saw the stuff. We want to know the count here for James. Well, Joe Vanelli, as mentioned, also a very good basketball player. This one's hit pretty deep into the outfield. Right fielder's back to the wall, and that one's going to bounce off the wall, get away from him. James cruising around second on his way to third, and he's going to pull in with a stand-up triple. Nice piece of hitting there. Deep to right center. I think the outfielders are all having a hard time getting their footing. Ray Fogel. Yeah, just tough to track in the rain. The wind has died down a little bit, but still, it's a tough play there for the right fielder Sullivan, and just didn't get back quite enough on it. Pitches in there for a strike from Giovanelli. He's going to try to strand that runner now with one out. Giovanelli suffered an injury playing basketball and hasn't really been able to hit this year, but he can still pitch. Coach Bissonette told me that he's. The best center field prospect he's seen in 12 years of coaching. Not a bad pitcher either, but that one skims the arm of Bray Fogle, and he'll go to first on the HBP. That puts runners at the corners with one out. First baseman, Dan Porish. Dan Porish, the slugging first baseman in here with the chance to do some damage. And Coach Keller brings out some dry balls. Yeah, if you're the Red Knights, you got to feel pretty good. You've uh, you've stayed in this game, you've battled, you've chased Hokuson out of the game here in the fifth. And a nice pitch. And you got another little rally going, so. It's a strike. Joe Vanelli, also a very good football player. In eight games, he had 22 receptions, 614 yards, and 12 touchdowns as a wide receiver. And there's a nice pickoff move. I'm going to let him take second. Nicely played by the defense there. Try to get James dancing off third base. But it's a no-go, and now two in scoring position. That's the tying run moving up to second in scoring position here with one out. James made that play. They had him picked off. They could have gone to second, but James bluffed down the line. He probably would have made it home. There's a fly ball to deep right field. It's going to be a tough play if it stays fair. And he's unable to catch it. That's going to bring home both runs and tie this game. Throw to the plate is not in time. And Porish moves to third base on the throw. And just like that, it's a 5-5 ball game. And these BSM boys are hyped. That's a big triple. Got the fans out of their seats. A lot of well-hit balls these last couple of innings to the deeper parts of the ballpark, Nick. Like I said, we are in for a high-scoring affair. Ben Thompson. Sullivan getting a lot of action out there in right field, a lot of tough plays, and that was another one that just glanced off his glove. Wind's still pushing out that way. That's, that's a really hard play. Finds the inside corner for strike one. Here's Joe Vanelli goes to work against Ben Thompson, the second baseman. And misses outside. Dan Porish representing the go-ahead run at third base with one out here. Red Knights have already pushed two across in the top of the fifth. Giovanelli breaks off a curveball. It lands low. Orioles out hitting the Red Knights 10 to three, but yet a tie score. This hit filed on the right field line. Goes to show you the value of some timely hitting, some good at bats, some patience. And fielding, like we said. Suddenly it's SLP looking to get out of a jam. 
They've, they've certainly had the runners tonight. And Benilt's just been able to bat them off at the timely spots. Thompson steps out here with the 2-2 count. This be a big out for Giovanelli if he can get it. Shakes off a couple from the catcher, and there seems to be a bit of a disconnect between the battery mates here. Here's the pitch. That's a good one. Fought away. Thompson hanging in there. He's grounded out twice in this game. Once to third and once to the pitcher. The delivery from Giovanelli is a great curveball. Thompson swings over it for strike three, and that's a big second out for Stefano Giovanelli. That's, that's just not fair. Kept coming inside, coming in on the hands. Batter did a great job fighting him off, and that one just dipped right under. Here comes Tomas Lee. Two outs and a runner on third. First pitch misses outside. Tomas has flown out twice today. Here he sends one foul. Five five here in the top of the fifth. Great ball game between Benilde St. Margaret's and St. Louis Park. Nick, it seems like every half inning has had these critical moments. And this is another one with Benil, the chance to take the lead. Lee at bat. And the Orioles trying to get out of it and get the lead back again. 2-1 the count here to Tomas Lee from Stefano Giovanelli. Porsche standing on third. Ooh, that one hit him. Ooh. And yeah. it looks like the umpire is going to say it hit his hand as an extension of the bat and call it a foul. Oof. Insult to injury there. That's tough. And he's hurting, pointing to his right wrist area. Coach out for a look. We'll see if he can continue in this at bat. No sweat, toughs it out. Look at the replay here. Ooh. It certainly does look like it got him in the knuckles there. So no hit by pitch instead of strike, and that brings the count to two and two. Got him. That one did get him. Ball never lies, some would say. Unfortunately, it looks like that one inflicted a little bit less pain there for Lee. Hey, good on him for staying in there, getting hit back to back pitches essentially. No fear in that, young man. Number six. Took two for the team. Sam Monk. We've got a pitching or a uh, pinch hitting appearance here. It's Sam Monk coming in for the catcher, Sullivan Lawrence. Come on, Monk, let's go. Get to earth. And he comes into a big spot. Fouls that one away. Runners on the corners and two outs. Giovanelli looking to get out of a jam and keep this game gridlocked. <laughs> Wind's starting to pick up again. We see that American flag flapping out towards right field. I mean, if you're a monk, you have, you have one job. Put the ball in play, force the Orioles to play some more defense. A couple foul balls here. He's coming out swinging. I think when, when he got his number called, Nick, he was, he's looking to make a difference. Coming into a big spot, the senior. One-two count, here comes the pitch. 
Ooh, out, into, out front of the breaking ball, and he fouls it into his own dugout. Five, five, two down. And here again is the one-two offering. That one misses inside, and Lee will hustle into second base. Runners on second and third now in a big spot for Monk. That one low, and it gets away from the catcher. Wait, Coming wait. home, here comes the flip, and he's in safely. And a little gritty right in front of you there, Nick. I don't like it. <laughs> Benilde St. Margaret's takes a 6-5 lead, first lead of this ball game for the Red Knights, who have charged back after falling behind 4-0 in the second. Pitch is way high. Monk draws a walk in his pinch hit appearance. And now runners are on the corners. As the number nine hitter, Brady Yakish, steps in. Left fielder, Brady Yakish. Coach out here giving uh, some advice to the umpire. So with two outs and the lead already gone, Giovanelli just in damage control a little bit here, and he's got a great move to pick him off. They need to get this out, and oh, they can't do it. A little bit of sloppiness in the infield for the Orioles, and another run comes across in the process. It's now a seven to five, the nil lead. And you know, if you're Giovanelli, that's, that's frustrating. He made a great move to get the pick off. Should have been out of the inning. And his fielders just can't quite help him out. Coach Kelly now out for a chat, bringing everyone together on the mound. Think back to that, that hit by pitch for Lee. And this has sort of been the story for the Knights. He makes it all the way around the bases. And I don't think we had any balls in play there. Steal. It's kind of been the Wild story pitch. of the game for, for BSM. They've managed to manufacture some rallies without doing a whole lot of hitting. And they're going to bring out some diamond dust and dump it on the mound here, try to make these conditions a little, a little better for the pitchers. Here you see the Metro West Conference records and you can see why this is a big game. Benilde St. Margaret's leading the conference right now with a 5-1 record, but Chaska and St. Louis Park just behind at 4-1. SLP with that one loss in conference play. Kennedy right behind him, 3-1. The Orioles will make up that game with Kennedy with the doubleheader later this spring. Coach Kelly out there doing a little raking on the mound and the Orioles looking to get off the field so they can go back and try to do a little raking themselves at the plate. What's Coach Kelly saying to the guys here, Nick? He's probably just trying to calm them down. You know, as you said, you don't want to get too, too frustrated or upset with the course of events. There's still a lot of ball game left. Yeah, I think it's a good time to Good kind of time to take a break. Freshen up the mound, sell the guys down. You just need one out. Runner on second still, still a threat, but you should be able to get out of this. Giovanelli's throwing good. A little bit better fielding, and we'll have a chance to, to pick him up in the bottom of the inning here. And it looks like the diamond dust helped a little bit because the first pitch after the conference is in there for a strike from Giovanelli. Here as he goes back to work against Yakish. Yeah. 
Good yeah. take. Yak is a pretty great baseball nickname, I gotta say. Seven five, Benilde lead. Here's we play in the top of the fifth. Moving to his off speed stuff here, Nick. He's able to throw it for strikes and it's always a plus. Monk dancing around there at second base, trying to distract him a bit. He's going to third, here comes the throw down and that's in the dirt. Not a strong throw there by the catcher, Helfman. So Monk moves to third base. He's 90 feet away from putting them up by three. Two two after the ball from Joe Vanelli, and this has been a long inning for the Orioles. They'd really like to get out of here. It's a ground ball, slow one to short. Picked up by Farley. He guns it over to first. Makes the play. Yeah, it was burning down the line. Great hustle. Huge, huge throw by the shortstop there. Able to pick it up and make a strong throw. Very close play, got him by half a step. So the Red Knights strike four times in the top of the fifth, take a 7-5 lead. And now the Orioles are gonna go to work here in the bottom of the fifth with a deficit. Nick stepped away, maybe just hold off. Now pitching for the Mel St. Margaret's number 29, Connor Novak. Once again, 6 and Monk now catching. 29, Connor Novak now pitching and now batting for St. Louis Park in the bottom of the fifth. Third baseman, Andrew Bayla. A new pitcher on the mound for Benilde St. Margaret's here in the bottom of the fifth. It's the left-hander, Connor Novak. And a swing and a miss for Velas on the first pitch, and he loses his bat, and it's hanging on the fence there. The first memeable moment of the game. <laughs> and they're gonna have a little bit of an adventure trying to get that out as it dangles from the netting. Cue the circus music, Chris. <laughs> This 
is uh, one of the odder delays I've seen in a baseball game. Hey, we go. Spider Man. Look at this climbing. Hey. Hats off to Hank Bendrickson, the designated hitter, also the designated getter. Okay, Nick. <laughs> So a solid outing for Caleb Koski. He threw four innings, gave up five runs, most of that damage coming in the second when he gave up four. Otherwise, I thought uh, a pretty solid outing there, Chris. Absolutely. Not a lot of hard hit balls, a lot of you know tough fielding, not quite airs, but these guys could have picked him up a little bit. He did well, he, he hung in there. Leaves the game with the team in the lead. So Velas has his bat back, and now he'll step back in on an 0-1 count. Pitch comes in high, and that'll leave it at 1-1. Again, you're watching St. Louis Park Orioles High School Baseball on Park TV. My name is Nick Nelson, joined by color commentator Chris Tatarek, a couple of Orioles alums. We went to high school with assistant coach Danny Bissonette, one of our good friends enlisted us for this assignment and we were happy to take it on. One, two, the count to Velas. As the umpire calls time. Lawrence is gonna go out for a chat. Sorry, that's Monk. Thought I overheard the PA announcer saying that Lawrence was going back into the game. Didn't know if that was allowed. Seven five BSM leading, and the Orioles in need of base runners here. As it's suddenly getting late early, just down and in, evens the count at two and two. Novak number twenty nine, a senior, getting his first action in this game after relieving Goski. Frozen with the breaking ball. Velas will head back to the dugout. Caught Novak warming up a little bit, Nick. He he throws hard. Second baseman, Henry. There he switches Oden. it up. Breaking ball. Over for a strike. Here comes Henry Odens. Struck out looking his last time up. in the dirt, skips away. Monk will grab a new ball and throw it out to Novak. 1-0 count. <laughs> Second pitch is high, it's 2-0. As Odins looks to get on base and spark a rally here for the Orioles in the bottom of the fifth. Swing and a miss on the 2 0 pitch. Took a big cut at that one. Yeah, sat back on it and tried to get that launch angle. Ended up launching under it. Just missed. On the 2 1 pitch, and that's going to make it 3 1 to Odin's. Fastball, he pulls it to the right side. Scooped up by the second baseman. Throw is wide and it pulls the first baseman off the bag. And Owens is aboard. Well, we've said it a few times tonight, Chris. Defense. You gotta make the plays. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Another another one that should have been an out. Did a great job hustling over there. Kind of had to wait, wait on it a little bit as the ball died in the grass. Might have, might have forced a quick throw, but the play was there. And just like that, the Orioles are on. And as we've seen tonight, if you get on, you're usually coming around one way or another. First pitch is in there for a strike to Bendixson, who we saw climb the fence and retrieve the bat. 
Now he's going to look to help out his teammates in another way by keeping this rally going. Pitch is down low. Count goes to 1-1. One one. Bowden's staying pretty close at first base there. The Orioles don't want to be risking any, losing any base runners right now. It's a good pitch. In there for a strike, and now one and two, the count to Bendixson with one out here. Bottom five. There's a rip, goes the other way. And it's fielded, the soft liner. Reeled in by the second baseman, he goes over to first, and they thought they had him doubled off. Looked like he got back in time. Nice effort there by the second baseman. That one just dies off the bat. Good hustle by Odins there. Very close play. They honestly might have had him there by, a, by an inch. But replay not an option as of now here on the high school baseball circuit, so Odins will stay on first, two outs now. And here comes the number nine hitter, Brady Walsh. Pitch from Novak is in there for a swinging strike. All one. BSM crowd liked that pitch. The umpire not so much. One and one. Two down. He's grounded down the third baseline. Just a foul. You can see here. Whew. Almost looked like it hit the chalk there, but went a little, a little wide a third. If you're Walsh, you're looking off speed here. That's been his, that's been his strikeout pitch. Throws it for strikes. If you see something coming slow over the plate, you gotta get the bat off the shoulder and let her rip. Down in the muck. Count is two and two. Good catching by Monk to keep the runner on first. Low again, that fills up the count. Stanley Reganti standing in the on deck circle. He'd love a chance here with a couple runners on. Pitch from Novak. Catches the inside corner for strike three, and the Orioles are gone here in the bottom of the fifth. That off speed pitch, that's, it. that's his money pitch. Low and inside to a righty coming across with a sweeping lefty hook. One hit, no errors, and you got to take a cut there, Nick. Left on base. So it's 7 5, Benil St. Margaret's in the lead here as we go to the sixth. Giovanni's going to be back on the mound here for the top of the sixth inning, looking for a bit of a smoother go after giving up four in the last inning. As you can see here, we spoke earlier about Coach Dan McEachern and his sad passing recently. Here you can see a photograph of Coach Mack, number six there on the right. A little throwback Friday for you here. As we mentioned, star player there for the Gophers, the team that went to the College World Series some 30, well, almost 40 years ago. Here he is coaching. Almost 50 years ago. Yeah, Coach Osted there, another good guy we're all familiar with from our days in high school. Ooh. Now batting for Benel St. Margaret's on the top of the six, designated hitter, Caleb Costi. Coach Mack, you can see that nice smile. 
Rusty. Good guy. Just a nice guy and great teacher. Back to the top of the order here in the top of the sixth for Benilde St. Margaret. It's Caleb Koski going up against Giovanelli. Who misses, just misses with that one. Here you go, Caleb. Asks if it was high. It looked like it might have been at about the letters. Pitch from Giovanelli is fouled away. Well, as the rain continues to fall, the condition of the field just gets tougher and tougher as the game goes on. The drainage here, not, not quite at target field levels. Giovanelli slumped over there. You know, he knows he's squeezing it a little bit, just needs to loosen her up. Throw strikes, count on his guys behind him. That's nice pitch, pitch there. Get to two strikes. Comes the delivery from Giovanelli. Way to fight it off, buddy. Way nice to little off speed there. Koski. Tops it right into the ground. Reaches out and pokes one the other way into shallow right. And the play is made with relative ease by Sullivan. One away here. Third baseman, Connor. Armand. The Orioles are looking for a quiet inning. They've, you know, the, the Knights have only scored in two innings, but it seems like the last four, have, nothing's, nothing's come easy. Here they are, one down, nobody on. Armand at the dish here, he's 0 for 3, a couple strikeouts. Grounded out to short in his last at bat. High heat there from Giovanelli. He can't catch up with it. Puts the count at one and two. Chopper's going to go over the mound. Going to be a tough play at short. Nice. And he can't quite glove it. Farley would have had to move quickly on that one, make a very quick transfer and clean throw as Armand was hustling down the line. Good parenting, Dad. He had the right idea. Make a push, you know, sprint Short all stop. out. Ben Try to get Jay. a clean field if you can. If you don't, you weren't going to be able to make the out anyway. Another one, though, where these, this wet grass may be slowing the ball down a little more than Harley expected. One on, one out, and now the heart of the order coming up for Benilde St. Margaret's, and here comes Ben James, the number three hitter. First pitch misses for a ball. James looking for a sign from his coach here. He might want the green light. He got it. He took a big hack. Foul tip, though. Count as 1-1. One one. Pitch misses outside, two and one. Stefano Giovanelli looking to keep this deficit at two. That one found the inside corner for a strike. James walks away, shaking his head at the dugout. Two, two count from Giovanelli. Tries to get him chasing a low breaking ball there, but no go, and it's going to be three and two. Joe Vanelli might try to jump out ahead here and get him inside. 
Got the good pickoff move, and let's see if they can get him this time on the rundown. Farley sprinting after him, and he's going to take care of it himself. That's one way to do it. Makes up for his uh, tough play earlier. Clears the bases now with two outs. And now you're going to see James get the green light and see what he can do with it. He gets Bond. Take. Wow, nice pitch on the inside corner. Called strike three. And the Orioles are out of the inning without a run allowed, so they'll go to the bottom of the sixth, down two. One hit, no errors, and nobody left on base. Good inning for Giovanelli. Yeah, the ump's been given that inside plate all day. You got to take it. You got to take what's there. And the batters have to make the adjustment. Scoot back a little bit. Yeah, you know, I've seen the BSM players shaking their head at some of these calls, but it seems to me it's being called both ways. Yeah. The way I see it, the ball's inside. That means it's within reach. You just got to get out and get it. Maybe take a little shimmy back in the uh, batter's box. Love me a shimmy. Got a shimmy. for St. Louis Park in the bottom of the sixth, center fielder Stanley Reginti. So the Orioles coming up here in the bottom of the sixth, running out of chances to try and get back in this ball game, but they'll have the top of their order here coming up, starting up with the leadoff man, Reginti. And there it is again, that inside corner being called both ways. As Novak moves ahead, 0 and 1. Swinging on that one, pulls the foul. And now Reginti falls himself, finds himself in a 2 0 or a 0 2 hole. Again, look for Novak to keep curling it in there, low and inside. That's where he likes to throw it. Those could really use a base runner here. And the 0-2 pitch. Big slow breaking ball, misses high. Count is one and two. Goes after the high fastball and lifts it very high in the sky. Second baseman gathering himself under it and makes the catch for the first out. Right fielder, Thompson with the grab Graham there, so. Sullivan. Here comes Graham Sullivan. Pitch from Novak. Misses high and it's a 1-0 count. So if you're the Red Knights at this point, you're just trying to throw strikes, make plays, and get out of here with a win on the road. <laughs> Orioles do look a bit deflated. Coming off that second inning rally where they were whooping it up in the dugout, and now they're looking a little wet and soggy, and you know they need, they need a spark. Nice pitch! Catches the outside corner, one and two, and now Novak is Looking like he's a little bit in cruise control. Pitch to Sullivan. Pulled foul. Good piece of hitting there, though. Got out in front. You know, let the head of the barrel just drop down. Let the bat do the work. Just a little bit ahead. 
Novak likes this off-speed stuff. It's there to be hit. It's just they haven't cracked the code yet. Chases in the dirt, ball gets away from the catcher, Monk. And nice hustle down the line there by Sullivan as he beats out the throw and gets on base. And if you had first base steal on your bingo card, check that box. That goes well in hand with a lot of the plays we've seen tonight, Nick. If the ball hits the ground, you better start Left running. Fielder, Christopher Hopkinson. Well, the Orioles have certainly been bit by that enough themselves. The story of this game, I think, is that the Red Knights have been able to score seven runs on just four hits with the Orioles committing four errors and a few bad breaks beyond that. First pitch just misses. It's a 1-0 count here for Hokanson, the number three hitter. This is the guy you want at the plate here as the tying run. Novak misses again, count is 2-0. I was looking forward to this lefty-lefty matchup too. Novak liked to curl it inside on the righties. It's gonna be tailing away from Hokanson here, see if he can stretch those long arms out and maybe go the opposite field. Wow, takes off. Gets and he's under. able to get under the tag. A little bit of protest, but. Monk was able to smother that one pretty good in the dirt. Had it in his hand right away. That's just a good slide. Maybe a little bit of a belly flop, but it worked out. So now runner on second with one out. Novak finds the zone on 3-0 and it's a 3-1 count and now you know that Hawk Hokinson's gonna be locked in looking for something to crush. Novak shakes off and steps off. Look for Hokinson to stick with the Excuse me, Novak, just keep with the, stick with the off speed. Something down. He doesn't want to make a mistake here to Hokanson. Called a strike on the outside corner. Hokanson can't believe it. He was ready to toss his bat and head over to first. Pick it up and step back in. Bat a little muddier than usual. Sullivan on second, one out, count full. Novak misses, and the ball gets away, and Sullivan's able to move up to third. And now all of a sudden, the Orioles will bring up Ben Farley, their cleanup hitter, as the go-ahead run. Shortstop, Ben Farley. Tough day to be a catcher, Nick. A lot of balls in the mud, and you're expected to turn around, find them, and make a throw. It's I'm gonna come out and give the mound some treatment again here. Spreading around that diamond dust. You gotta love coach BK out there taking care of it himself. Smile on his face. He's the coach of the people. He works hard. Very popular figure in this program and a great difference maker for this St. Louis Park Orioles baseball. A 7-5 score here in the bottom of the sixth. One inning to go after this. And the Orioles would love it if they could take the lead. Just try to go out there and close it out in the top of the seventh. The question is, what are they going to do with Hokanson on first? <laughs> if 
they'd love to give him a second, one way or another. Chance to tie the game. Well, Hokinson had four stolen bases, tied for the team lead coming into this game, stole one earlier today. Certainly a threat. You don't want to take any undue risks against the lefty here. DSM calls their play from the plate. And now Novak will go to work against Farley. It's a bunt. Stays right at home plate and goes foul. And when you get ahead in the count, jump. You know, bunting with the cleanup hitter, maybe not your traditional baseball, but as we said, Farley's a guy who can do a lot of things. And that is a big run on first base for the Orioles. And, and this is not your traditional team. They got they got hitters all up and down the lineup. Right now, they need to get that runner in scoring position. Showing bunt again, pulls back and takes a rip into the gap. Left fielder comes over and makes a nice play. Hawkinson had rounded second. He slips, and the throw is going to be back to first for an easy double play. Tough break for the Orioles there. And it looks like they're going to call the game here, Nick. Turns out to be a game-ending play. The field conditions have gotten to the point that they're going to call it an inning early. So Benilde St. Margaret's falls behind 4-0 in the second. Rallies back. Giovanelli's out there looking like he wants to go warm up. For the Orioles in the bottom of the sixth, no runs. No hits, no Looks like we might no play on. on. Looks like there's a little confusion. A couple players on the field. The Orioles return to action tomorrow afternoon. Okay, game on. They're going back out. I, I think it'd be right tough to end a game like this in inning early. These teams are both noon. fighting so hard. Once again, weather permitting, it will be St. Louis Park hosting Lysana tomorrow at 12 noon right here at Derrick Keller Field. Tough play on that last play there, Nick. Big at bat. Drove one, one of the best hit balls of the day, day, and coincidentally, one of the best fielding plays we've seen. Yeah, it was very nice on both ends. Uh, you know, I think Hokinson probably gets back if he doesn't slip and fall in the mud there. Here we watch the replay. It was a drive. And Hokinson just had no chance to get back. He's, he knows it. He's, he's jogging back. That's just a tough break. And BSM was pumped about that one. And there you see the rain coming down. Now batting for St. Margaret. Top of the seventh final and inning here at Derek Keller Field Center in St. Louis Park. The East Orioles two. trailing seven to five. Great Stefano Giovanelli still on the mound. Center Easton Brayfogle. Easton Brayfogle, the cleanup hitter, will get things started here in the seventh for the Knights. First pitch hits him right in the thigh. No intent there, just, just throwing hard, trying to throw inside. But unfortunately, it's another free base for the Knights. And as we've seen thus far, a recurring story. And here comes Dan Porish. Maybe the player of the game hit that big two-run triple in the fifth that really felt like sort of the turning point. Take strike one. Go, DP. Fouls that one away. Big cut there. 0-2 count. Giovanelli will look to put him away. Runner on first with nobody out here in the top of the seventh. And here comes the 0-2. Pickoff moving again. Another nice pickoff move. And he got him. We've seen some impressive moves off the mound today. Well, and if you're that runner leading off at first, you know, we saw Hawkinson fall down on the base pass. It's, it's muddy and slippery out there. It's tough to make that quick move. 
we see the move again by Giovanelli. No problem. Strikes out Porsche, throws Porsche, the throw goes down. And with that, all of a sudden, threat neutralized, two outs, nobody on. As here comes Ben Second Thompson, the second baseman. Ben Thompson. Thompson still looking for his first hit today. There's the pitch from Giovanelli. Very nice. Well, breaking ball finds its way over the plate. He's quickly going back to work here. That one's fouled away and. Now Thompson finds himself in an 0-2 hole. Reminder fans, once again, to please return foul balls to the game. Thank you. 0-2 here in the top of the seventh. Orioles down two. They're going to get off the field and take one more shot at it. Pitch just misses. He thought he might have had it. A couple fielders taking steps towards the dugout there, but count is 1-2. There's a fastball blown past him for strike three. A little bit of gusto on that one, Nick. I think he's trying to fire up his boys here into the, into the last chance. Bottom of the seventh. For the Red Knights on the top of the seventh, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on B. So 7-5 will head into the bottom of the last inning. Novak going to be heading back out to the mound here, looking to close it out for the BSM Red Knights. A little gathering out at third base for the team as they pump themselves up and try to go out and take care of business here. You can see the rain coming down pretty well. You know, there might be more of a consideration to call a game like this, Chris, but with the number that they've had to cancel and reschedule and all the turmoil with the weather this spring, they really don't have a choice. Yeah, unfortunately, it's... Nobody likes playing baseball in the rain, but you know, both teams are, are playing hard, playing well. It's been an entertaining game. Most of the fans have stuck around. I saw a few that, uh, that fled, but that's understandable because it is, it is pretty, pretty wet out here. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, you know, you can't call them fair weather fans when the weather is not fair. Hey. Orioles will be sending up their five, six, and seven hitters due up. Helfman, Vela, and Odins. As here comes Zach Helfman, the catcher, looking to get them started and create a spark here in the bottom of the seventh. First pitch is in there. Once again, finding that inside corner. Novak just has a nice, easy delivery. He steps and throws, and it just, he hits his spot. That low and inside of these righties has been eating them up. The 0 1, fouled away, and very quickly, Helfman finds himself down 0 2. Appreciate you joining us here on the stream this evening on Park TV. Very fun ball game. Sure, a lot of people watching this right now probably double casting with the Timberwolves playoff game, which recently got underway. We wish the best of luck to the Wolves in Memphis. Solidly struck through the hole and on an 0 2 count. Helfman gets aboard. That's a big hit. Third baseman, Andrew. Vela. Huge hit. Gives Vela the chance to come up. A little, little boost in his step. Feel like he's got a, got a man on. Orioles will bring in Favor once again to pinch run, get a little more speed on the bases there for the catcher. As here comes Vela. Singled and scored in his first at bat. Grounded out to second and struck out looking since. He drives the first pitch to right. Right fielder going back, that's over his head and it's to the wall. Favor charging around to third base. He'll be held and just like that, the Orioles have the tying run on second base. 
Vela is pumped. That's what I've been looking to see, the lefties against Novak. He's, he's been jamming up the righties all day, but these lefties. And Vela, nice, easy swing. Didn't do too much, comes out. Almost left the ballpark, Nick. That thing was crushed. So a big huddle on the mound, and all of a sudden BSM finding themselves in big trouble. Tying run on second base with nobody out. Great ball game tonight. A lot of uh, big momentum swings. That one, that was one right there, absolutely. Where it looked like we were going to be getting out of here and drying off. Owen's getting chatted up by Coach Bissy over there in the on deck circle. Coming up for a big at bat here, trying to keep his bat dry. He's had a good game. Two for three. Had that big at bat in his first at bat. Really great AB. Seven five, nobody out. Odin's representing the winning run in the batter's box. These fans are fired up. They can they can feel it. Calls time and steps out. Crowd loves it. Wind very gusty right now. Pitch from Novak, fastball, fouled straight back. Pitch from Novak, once again, fouled into the backstop and that'll push the count to 0-2. Once again, Owens is going to have to battle here. The 0-2 offering from Novak. Great take by Odins. He was tempted, but holds off on the outside pitch, and we have a 1-2 count. Way up there, and now the count goes to 2-2. Two, two. And once again, Odin's having a great at bat. He swings at strikes, and he takes balls. That's, that's the name of the game. Literally. The 2-2 two, two pitch. Down and away. And Odin's has worked back to a full count. Hank Bendixson, the DH on deck. Still nobody out. Pinch runner Jacob Favor standing on third base. In for Zach Helfman, the catcher, who singled the lead off the inning. Andrew Vela on second after that big double. Swing and a miss, and a big, big pitch by Novak there to get the first out. Nice play by Monk, the catcher, to make sure it didn't get by him, keep the runners where they're at. Brings up some strategy here with first base open and one down now. Bendixson. You got the lefty-righty matchup. You got the designated hitter. Bendixson certainly can swing the bat. As Novak goes to try and get the mud out of his cleats. Yeah, I don't think Novak wants to put the go-ahead run on here. I think he's going to attack him, make him get a hit. Yeah. And maybe they're going to go out and strategize a little bit just to figure out exactly what their plan will be. One out, two on. Orioles trailing by two, and they are going to actually pull Novak out of the game right now. Got to tip a cap to him. Absolute great game. He came in very well after Koski left. Now pitching number eight. 
McBride. Peter McBride, the senior, will come in here and try to get the last two outs. And uh, this, Chris, is what they would call a save situation. <laughs> Very much so. Well, and that's tough. You're coming in, it's cold, it's wet. It's been a huge emotional game for both teams. Rivalry. He's gonna get some warm-up pitches in, so you know, get loose. A little, little sidearm delivery here. But if you're Bendixson, it's all about you right now. Coming up with two runners to score in position and a chance to tie the game. This is this is what dreams are made of. Well, they get away from the lefty-righty matchup. They pull in a righty and Typically, guys who have the arm slot that's a little lower are going to be even a little tougher on same-sided hitters. And that might be part of the part of the thinking here. As you can see, sort of a three-quarters delivery there from McBride. Opportunity here for Bendixson to come through. Big hit for his team, Bendixson, a junior. A fun fact is that he's very much into trading cards. Loves to buy and sell them online and also a pretty good football player. Might not surprise you as you look at his physique. A big kid. You hear you see him timing up McBride. In the dugout circle, but as soon as he steps into that box and he sees this this delivery coming at him. And here we go, a big at bat. McBride versus Bendixson. First pitch, a swing and a miss, gets away, and the runners are going to hold. Probably a smart choice there. No reason to come home. Good, good call there. Bendixson would like to have that swing back. Probably lucky he didn't make contact, honestly. Well, just like we said, pretty tough to read that pitch coming from that delivery, and obviously he didn't get a very good look at that one. You know, it's difficult when you're out there, you're pumped up and you want to swing the bat. I mean, you know you can tie this game with one swing. It's a high fly ball. That one doesn't look like it's going to leave the infield. Second baseman gathering under it. And with that, the Orioles are going to be down to their last out. Not a bad swing on that one from Bendixson. Just got under it a little too much. Yeah. So with the Orioles one out away from a loss, a tying run on second base, here comes the number nine hitter, Brady Walsh. Ooh, those pitches. Very high and tight. Walsh one for three on the day, has an RBI on a ground out. Holds off on that pitch. McBride's throwing it up in the zone, which is going to make it tough to to drive something. Really want to be patient here and not not go chasing. It's a 2-0 count to the first baseman Walsh, and that one hits him. He'll go to first base as the winning run. They're loaded up for the leadoff man, Stanley Reggie. Center fielder, Stanley Reginti. 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 Stan the man. <laughs> That's easier. Well, he'll be Stan the man if he can put something to a gap and just end this game with one swing. And, and he gets hit by a pitch on the first offering from McBride, and with that, the tying run is 90 feet away.
You know, our stat sheet doesn't run very right deep here, Nick, but Graham the amount of Sullivan. walks hit by pitch, fielding errors on ground balls. This has been an interesting game, to say the absolute least. <laughs> like you said, it's had a little bit of everything. How about a walk-off win? Seems like we're heading in that direction right now. It's got to be up to McBride and, and his defense to... You know, they, they're still one out away from winning the game, Nick. 7-6, seven, bottom seven, two outs. It's Graham Sullivan, the right fielder. Count is 1-0. and oh. McBride looking in. He's ready to fire. Ground ball to short. Fielded, flip to second. And there's your ball game. Seven six, Benilde St. Margaret's wins in a very entertaining interesting ball game. They overcame that early deficit, fought hard, took the lead. For the Orioles at the bottom of the seventh, one run, one hit, no errors, two runners left on base. Final score, the Benelt St. Margaret's Red Knights, seven, the St. Louis Park Orioles, six. Congratulations to both teams on a well-played Metro West Conference game. We'll have the final totals coming up in just a moment. So Benilde St. Margaret's moves to 6-1 and one on the season. They scored seven runs on four hits, two errors. St. Louis Park going to fall to 4-2. and two. Scored six runs on 12 hits, four errors. Four times they scored in the second in that big inning, and then just two times after that, Chris. Here are the final totals for the Benilde Knights. was able to just settle in and Benilde take St. care Park of business. Red Knights, seven runs, four hits, they were. The Orioles had a, it seemed like a, another big inning going there at the end, but, uh, you know, for all the talk of sloppy defense, they stepped up. Shortstop made a nice play, scooped it over to second, and that's your ball game. Credit to both teams, though. Great game, battling through the elements. Very entertaining for the fans, and it was a pleasure to call it with you, Nick. You as well. So 7-6, to six, the final Once score again, from Derek Keller Field. Orioles fall to the Benilde St. Margaret's Red Knights. We thank you for joining us here on Park TV for the game. There go the lights. So I guess that's all for us. Thanks a lot. My name is Nick Nelson, joined by Chris Tatarek, signing off here on Park TV.